Mr. O'Farrell, I, I really don't have a clue why you might be at the center aisle. I mean, it's my understanding we finished our, our presentation for today, unless, unless there is some, some surprise or something that I'm unaware of. I don't, I don't know why you would be where you are, but since you are, I'm going to uh, give the floor to you. Is something hot and exciting going on? Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> yes, as uh, those in the chamber may have guessed, um, we are here to celebrate an icon of Los Angeles, and that is Mr. Los Angeles himself, Councilmember Tom LaBonge. Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Farrell, I see we've been joined by our mayor, Mayor Garcetti, and our yes. city attorney, Mike Fuhr. And I'll, I'll say to them, both of them who've sat around this horseshoe, only one man could create that type of climate and emotion, and he is Tom LaBonge. <laughs> Never was a standing ovation ever more deserved than that one. A dedicated public servant who has served the city of Los Angeles for 39.6 years, but who's counting? <laughs> Our very own colleague and friend and mentor, Councilmember Tom LaBonge. Let me indulge you with a little history of Mr. Tom LaBonge. Thomas Joseph LaBonge was born October 6, 1953 at Queen of Angels Hospital the seventh of eight boys born to Mary Louise and Robert LaBonge of Silver Lake. And I repeat, eight boys, no girls. <laughs> Tom's deep felt love for the City of Angels was imparted to him by his parents, whose families have roots reaching several generations in this city dating back to the 1880s. Joining us today, of course, is Bridget LaBonge, his incredible wife. and his children that we've all watched grow up, Charles and Mary Catherine. Tom graduated from Ivanhoe Elementary School in 1965, Thomas Starr King Middle School in 1968, and John Marshall High School in 1971, all located in Silver Lake and Los Feliz. 
His civic spirit was ignited as a teenager when he served on Mayor Tom Bradley's Youth Council. And Olivia Mitchell is here to join us, too. I remember how good I felt when I could help someone out, Tom said. I just knew from the very beginning that this was going to be my life's work. Serving the people of Los Angeles in any way I could, says Tom, and he was certainly right. Upon earning his undergraduate degree from Cal State Los Angeles, he joined the staff of Councilwoman Peggy Stevenson for the 13th District in 1976, which was his very first job. In 1978, he joined the office of Council President John Ferraro of the 4th District, whose chambers bears the, his name. As a council aide for 15 years, as a field deputy, Tom learned the meaning and value of constituent services. Tom has served in many different capacities as chief of field operations for Mayor Richard Reardon. Tom oversaw a staff of deputies assigned to neighborhoods throughout every region of the 465 square mile city and acted as the mayor's special representative at community events. In 2001, upon the untimely death of Mr. John Ferraro, Tom won handily the council seat, District 4, after a special election to represent the good people of the 4th District. He was subsequently reelected to four-year terms in 03, 07, and 2011. His priorities as an elected leader included neighborhood preservation and enhancement, improved transportation systems, mobility, public safety, expansion and improvement of parks and open space, and beautification. Not to mention saving the Hollywood sign. Tom has also worked tirelessly in support of the Sister Cities of Los Angeles program, maintaining connections with cities all over the world. As you mentioned, Mr. President, we have a few special guests joining us as we bid farewell to the Honorable Tom LaBonge. First, Mayor Eric Garcetti, who served for 12 years on the Los Angeles City Council with Councilman LaBonge and worked closely and seamlessly for the neighboring communities of the 4th and 13th districts. Let's give a warm welcome to Mayor Eric Garcetti. Thank you so much. Uh, usually uh, the crying starts at the end, but Tom walked in here with his eyes red. And I think we all immediately felt that same moment of sadness that he feels, but there are also tears of joy. Tears of joy of so many moments that we couldn't possibly contain the stories, the smiles, the triumphs, the tragedies for which we've seen this man literally embody a city. I'll never forget the Los Angeles Times wrote an article, if I can call out, I'm sure he doesn't like his name being mentioned, but Dave Z, who we all know, wrote an article during the fires that uh, were in Griffith Park. And it sketched this picture of a man who was running around the midst of a fire, literally in the park, as we all know, I don't know exactly what vehicles Tom gets, but sometimes we find them in the Los Angeles River. Sometimes we find them driving through fire. Sometimes we find them, well, on our front door, knocking at any hour of the day or night. But Tom was running around doing at the end for somebody who maybe hasn't uh, written many articles like that. That journalist said he was doing exactly what a council member should do. Tom has been present for all of us. He's been present in our lives. He has been present, present in our personal lives, always asking how we are doing. He's been present in the lives of people who don't know him, but who've seen him in the city and who feel that they know Los Angeles when they hear him speak. Anybody who needs to see the life of Tom LaBonge and the community around him just needs to go between here and City Hall East right now. It's a living monument right now to all things LaBonge. There's Tom guiding kids through his beloved Mount Hollywood, where he's hiked nearly every morning. Actually, the first time we ever met was, well, the first time we talked was when we were meeting when I was a candidate. And he said, meet me up there. He brought a football. We tossed it. We talked. And he's done that for 35 years. You see another picture of him eating an ice cream cone at the original farmer's market. My personal favorite, a picture of Tom with a Beatles haircut speaking intently on what looks like a rotary phone or something. I mean, he's, this guy's been around for a long time. <laughs> All of us around the Horseshoe and certainly the 4th Council District know that Mr. L.A. is a man who likes to get his hands dirty. His trunk is, you know, one part pothole filler, 
another part calendar, and the rest of it's filled with loaves of bread that he gives out to folks to mark those moments. And it was Tom who taught me so many things. He taught me how to uh, always go like this at the end of a press conference. <laughs> he, he taught me how to, how to take a guy and just go like this the whole time and shove him here. Like, everybody's had the Tom where he's like, you know, and this guy's great, and here, here. By the end, you gotta go to the doctor to get work on your shoulder. He's taught me the... He's taught me the way to document history, to feel history, and to mark history. But he hasn't just marked history, he's made history. And he is our history. We often see Tom crouched by a curb, taking stuff out of a storm drain, or pulling his car over across lanes of traffic to get a piece of trash. We see that his love of this city is not something that he does in front of cameras. He does it when nobody is around. And I want to thank his family, because I know all of us, when we sign up, sacrifice so much. The time we don't get to see each other, the times we're not around. But I know for Tom, he is the most proud of everything he's done of raising these two children who are amazing and who we have watched grow up. So thank you, Tom, for what you have done as a family man. This is a man who grew up playing baseball at Griffith Park, football at John Marshall High School. He's like the rain man of mascots. You ask him any high school in the Southland, he'll tell you what the mascot is. Go ahead. Bob, you got a high school? Come on. It's your child. Roosevelt, right there. The, uh, <laughs> the Roosevelt, Pirates, yeah. San Pedro. Right? There you go, all right. <laughs> the Spartans, right there. There you go. Uh, at Silmar, no way, at Silmar, your opponent, because he was a tiger at San Fernando. There you go, all right. And a Mustang at Salesian, a there. Mustang. And a Chancellor at Cleveland. He started this I told you, see? <laughs> and a tiger, right there. Now, now, the thing that's tough is Tom has always had difficulty speaking in public. Yeah. And we've always had to bring him out of his shell at moments like this. But he has done so much with his voice. His voice started, actually, when he was a singer. He his angelic singing voice during his garage band phase as a front man for Joe Bush and the Hubcaps. He has seen, he has seen our city of angels survive earthquake, polluted skies, fires. He has been there in those emergency moments. And he's the guy, you know, we're doing a lot of work collectively on earthquakes. He's the one for 12 years who kept saying earthquakes, 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 it's coming. We gotta get ready. He makes us love Griffith Park, not just as a park, but what he calls the world's greatest urban park. In Hollywood, he says, he goes up to um, uh, tourists that are there. Where are you from? Whether they're from Germany or whether they're from Kansas, he says, you don't realize how beautiful this place is. And he helped restore it. Um, all the folks at Musso and Franks know him well. And he makes sure that anybody, whether it's the mayor of Guangzhou or a dear friend of his, goes and meets him there. And oftentimes I've bumped into him there. But nobody can doubt his authenticity. Look, we've all been through it. The first time you meet Tom LeBond, you're like, there's no way this guy's for real. I remember that. You kind of like, there's no way that what he's saying is for real. And you peel the layers of the onion, you realize it is 100% who he is, what he is, and really who we are and what we're about here. Um, one last thing I want to say is when we got into office shortly thereafter, that Los Angeles was, and we forget this, was about to be ripped apart into many pieces. The frustrations that people felt about City Hall and other things that were going on led to secession movements in the San Fernando Valley and in Hollywood. And Tom and I led the campaign in Hollywood. And I want to thank Mayor Hahn for the leadership at that time and everybody who came together. But Tom, representing both the Valley and Hollywood, went around. You could feel it in his heart. They wouldn't understand why this family would break up, why we, we would get divorced when Los Angeles, from every tip and every corner of this town, is such a special and beautiful place. And he embodied that, and I think as much as anybody, he kept this town together. So we would not be literally who we are today without you, Tom. And just on a personal note, I said it so many times, but I always felt it as council member. We had a district that bordered each other, but he taught me that there really was no border, partially because he was showing up in my district all the time at, at events. <laughs> but I realized that it came from a place of love. It came from a place of intense knowledge. And we governed as if there was no border, and that's the way he has always been here. He has been, I've always joked, I wish that we had a, British system so I could just be the head of government and I could make sure that he was the head of state. He is that king, that queen of Los Angeles, that man who has been able to go around, cut those ribbons, put those uh, squares out, make sure that people know why this is a city. And the one most uh, lasting thing, and I say it every single time because it comes from Tom LeBonza's mouth, when he talks to somebody who's here, 
or out there, but it really is a description of himself when he looks in the mirror. This is truly an angel in the city of angels. We love you, Tom Levine. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti, and another friend and ally to Tom LaBonge is our own city attorney, Mr. Mike Fior. Thank you, Mitch. Mr. President, council members, I think it's fair to say that nobody embodies the spirit of Los Angeles like Tom LaBonge. And it's fitting today that we have come together to celebrate Tom because how many times can each of us remember Tom convening all of us to celebrate the accomplishments of somebody else? Today is an appropriate day because as Tom, this moment is all about you as it should be. I have known Tom for 20 years since I took office as a city council member back in 1995. And I just want to talk about a couple things here. First, when I was on the city council, I was approached by a family who raised my consciousness about how really frustrating it was, to put it gently, for disabled kids to confront the conditions in our parks because they couldn't navigate them at all. They used to call the sand in our playgrounds the sand pit if they had a wheelchair, for example. I held a hearing in which I asked a child what he did to play, and he said, I roll my wheelchair out to my porch and I watch my friends. Tom LaBonge was instrumental in helping us find a place in Griffith Park, I don't know how you remember that, that became Shane's inspiration, named for the deceased son of a very courageous family. Uh, Tom made tremendous effort to be sure there was a location where children of all abilities could play, and then he made that a cause among many causes of his we know, for example, about the extension of that vision in Pan Pacific Park. So Tom is a person whose accomplishments are often talked about with regard to staving off secession or Griffith Park. But there is a special place in Tom's heart for kids in particular, and especially for kids who have special needs. And I wanted to highlight that today because it's not well known about Tom. The other thing about Tom that shouldn't be well known, but I'm going to say it out loud here, is I remember Tom, Eric ta talked about the measures, the things that he taught, that you taught him. But I remember it was a press conference, an event in Hollywood, not too many years ago. I think it was to celebrate the preservation of the Hollywood sign. I'm not sure I remember when Tom at this conference took off his shirt and put on a T-shirt. Now, when Tom took off the shirt he was wearing, he didn't have an undershirt on. So <laughs> this was a major lesson in how public officials can really display who they are to the entire community. <laughs> Tom LaBonge has been a role model for all of us in public service because of one special quality. He knows how to make every person with whom he comes in contact feel extraordinary. He has that capacity to, in the most authentic way possible, make sure that person knows they matter. And it is that common touch, Tom, that sense that you are every person in this city that I think is most memorable to me. It has been a privilege to serve with you in so many capacities, but I think we all know this. Tom LaBonge is far from done serving this city of Los Angeles, and we should be so lucky. Tom, congratulations. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, we have joining us today uh, another friend and ally from the Los Angeles Fire Department, but I also want to acknowledge Chief Ralph Terrazas, who I know is here. And that is friend and ally, Deputy Chief Daryl Arbuthnot, uh, for remarks about Tom Bonds. Deputy Chief. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. It's tough. 
it's tough seeing this, uh, this whole era of uh, the LaBange come to a close. Um, kind of going back, you've probably intermittently heard the story. Uh, I was about 14 years old, and my whole mission was to buy a 10-speed. So at the time, Mayor Bradley had a uh, student worker program, and I entered into it. It's 1974. And it turns out that Tom LaBange was my, uh, my supervisor. So he always pegs me as his first city employee. Is that correct? That's right. Along that story, so we worked for the Department of Sanitation, my brother and I and a few others. And we worked in the east side yard. Um, we'd go out all day and pick up trash, cut weeds and that sort of stuff. And Tom had this signature hand signal when he wanted us to do something. So he'd ride in a vehicle in front of us while we were in the back of a dump truck behind him, and he'd reach out his car, his hand, and point, which <laughs> meant for us to stop and get off, pick up the couch or chair or whatever it was. Um, I was always amazed when I, when I gained permanent employment with the city, working around Council LaBange, uh, his ability to recall names, his uh, un uncanny ability to recall very historical things about the city, and as you spend time with him, you ride in a car with him, you know, he just has always got this information to share with you. And I've always been impressed by that, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, and also, you know, Tom doesn't know this, this is the first time he's probably heard this. The fire department, we do a lot of training, and uh, I guess seven or eight years ago, we had a big brush fire in Griffith Park, and LaBange does have a city vehicle, but it has fire department, police department radios in it. <laughs> and uh, he responded up there, obviously, like we'd expect. But we would actually train on how to manage the councilmen while fighting a fire. <laughs> so to your credit, Tom, we appreciate your distraction for us. Uh, I, I also want to acknowledge Bridget, Charles, and Mary Kay because we have actually all stolen Tom at various times and, and taken him from his family life. So really appreciate that. And, and just as a side note, I'd like to also uh, acknowledge uh, Councilman uh, Bernie Parks, who's also leaving after 50 years of service with the city. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Arbuthnot. Uh, Tom, I don't know what to say. I think the mayor said it best when he said, is this guy for real? And when I first encountered Tom almost 20 years ago, I was a captain, and I believe you were working for Mayor Reardon at the time. And I'll tell you that Tom has consistently been a cheerleader for the fire department in good times and bad. He still comes over occasionally and, and talks to us and texts me and calls me with some suggestions. His heart is in the right place. He is a true champion of this city and especially the Los Angeles Fire Department. Tom, I can't thank you enough. Congratulations on your retirement. Thanks a lot. Thank you, gentlemen. And I, at this time, I'd also like to acknowledge a representative of the Los Angeles Police Department Representing LA's finest is LA's finest, and that's Deputy Chief B. Gramala. From the community of Larchmont Village in the 4th District, we have Joan Pickett from Pickett Fences. Larchmont Village bid for remarks. Hi, my name is Joan Pickett. I'm a business owner and a resident in CD4. Uh, through my volunteer efforts in the community, I've had the great pleasure to work closely with Tom for many years, not 39.6, but many. Um, I'm here today to thank Tom for improving our neighborhoods and improving our quality of life. You worked, Tom, you worked with us on medians, stop signs, crosswalks, handicap ramps, street signs, street lights, big belly trash cans, trees, parks, zoning, and HPOZs. You always work hard to fix the small things that made our daily lives better. Your support of our neighborhoods was unwavering. My favorite thing about you, Tom, is your enthusiasm and love for LA. You're the best civic booster in the entire city. You always celebrate all that is great about Los Angeles. So today, I want to celebrate you. Um, I'm sad to see you leave public office, but you'll still be the city's number one booster, and you and Bridget will still be our dear friends. I look forward to your next chapter. On behalf of Larchmont Village, the Larchmont Boulevard Association, and all our friends and neighbors, thank you for your service, thank you for loving LA, and thank you for your friendship.
and now president of the Sister Cities of Los Angeles, Tom Gilmore. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm here not just as Sister Cities president, but as a good friend of Tom LaBonge. He, he, you're my guy. Um, clearly, I don't have to tell anyone, this man has had a love affair with the city of Los Angeles all his life. It is the biggest love affair of his life outside, of course, of Bridget, Charles, and Mary Catherine, but it's a strong one nonetheless. I don't have a lot of time, so it's, not, it, it's important that we get this out quickly. He sings to this city once in a while. I don't know if you've noticed that, uh, uh, Councilman Buscaino, but he does sing to this city, but he always does it in the voice of Elvis. So, <laughs> so I'm going to embarrass myself right now and ask Tom to join me with Love me tender, love me true, let me, let me go. I have worked here for 40 years, and I don't want to go. Love me tender, love me long, nothing like Los Angeles. For the people who we serve are really the best. See, this is... I, I couldn't let him leave this chamber without at least getting the song in. You'll be hearing Tom sing many, many times again here in the city of Los Angeles and around the world with us at Sister Cities. He is the heart and soul of Los Angeles. I am grateful to know you as a resident of the city of Los Angeles and as Tom Gilmore. I thank you, Tom LeBond. Representing the port, is Doan here, Don Lou? Okay, he is here. Representing the Port of Los Angeles, we have another long-term friend and, and um, advocate for Tom LaBunch, Don Lou. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, first, I want to thank Councilman Buscaino for giving me a visa to leave uh, San Pedro for the day. <laughs> Come back to City Hall, a place I, I love. Um, uh, it's a great honor for me to be here on behalf of our Executive Director, Gene Soroka, and then 894 employees at the Port of Los Angeles to uh, honor the chair of the Trade, Commerce, and Tourism Committee and a good friend of the Port of Los Angeles. Um, this is a plaque that uh, is only given to port employees that retire after 30 years, so uh, it actually took a special act of uh, not necessarily Congress, but our Congresswoman was in support of this, uh, to get this special to get this special plaque here. Um, like Tom LaBonge, the Angels Gate Lighthouse is the unofficial welcoming monument of the city of Los Angeles. And so it's my great pleasure to present this plaque to Tom. Thank you, Tom. In the theme of the Port of Los Angeles, we also have a very special message from U.S. House of the U.S. House of Representatives, and that is from Congresswoman Janice Hahn of the 44th District, and I believe we have a tape. For 40 years, uh, Tom LaBonge is not going to be part of the city of Los Angeles. No one loves the city more than you do. No one has been a better ambassador for the city of Los Angeles than you, and honestly, no one will be as missed uh, when they leave as you. Uh, it really was a highlight of my political career to serve for 10 years on the city council with you. Um, I loved it when you and I sat next to each other because uh, we plotted about everything, we whispered about everything, we had a game that we played that if we were on a desert island, which one of our colleagues would we take with us? I think at one point uh, we couldn't think of anybody and it was just going to be you and me on the island. Uh, but I remember it was Jose Huizar that broke us up. And um, while we were excited for him to join us on the city council, we secretly were very upset uh, that he was going to come between us and no longer would we sit next to each other. Uh, but one of the things I, I wanted to say was something that my mother always said and uh, kind of hurt Jim's feelings and it hurt my feelings because we're the two children of Kenny Hahn. And my mother always said that you reminded her more of Kenny uh, than anybody else, even her two children. So everything you did was so Kenny Hahn. 
and sometimes I was jealous uh, that you actually got him better uh, than I got him. And who can forget that great day when we had a traveling motorcade coming down the 110 freeway carrying Reggie the alligator uh, in a cage. It was almost like the OJ chase. And we had news helicopters above us. And at the other end at the LA Zoo, there you were waiting with open arms uh, to accept Reggie the alligator and um, give him a home. He went from being my constituent to your constituent in a matter of moments. And I know you've taken uh, good care of him. I will never forget the time that we got bad information and we thought that John Paul II had passed away. So you grabbed me and you said, have you ever rung the bell at the top of City Hall? I said, no. He said, this is a momentous occasion. We went all the way up to the tower of City Hall. You leaned halfway over, grabbed the bell and started ringing it, announcing uh, that the great uh, Pope had passed away. Unfortunately, we had bad information, and the Pope had not died yet. Uh, so we were out there ringing the bell for, I guess we were predicting that he would die soon. Um, you have been a star in Los Angeles, but you were also a star internationally. I'll never forget the time I went to the Berlin City Hall, and I was touring the City Hall, and what should I find but Tom LaBonge photographs hanging in the Berlin City Hall. Uh, everyone loves you. Everyone appreciated your work for our sister cities. Mm -hmm. So let me just say that I had a few props here, like the basketball, the baseball, because no matter what issue we were talking about in city council, you would call up to your office and you would get a prop. Uh, I think I was hit in the head by a flying football for one of your speeches. Uh, but you were just great. You were a force bigger than life. So from me, to you and all the ships at sea. I just wish you the best retirement ever, Tom. And as you always said, as your sign off on your voicemail, let us continue to enjoy and love the great city of Los Angeles. Take care, Tom. And Tom, can relate to anyone from the common person on the street to superstars like Jane Fonda, who he knows. But one celebrity who's here today is a friend of his, and that is N Mr. Neil McDonough, to, the, to my right here, another supporter of Tom LaBanche. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as Isaac so perfectly put out, where's your tie, actor boy? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it, it is such an honor for Reve and myself, my wife Reve. Uh, to be here for Tom. Tom has done, we have five children, and what he's done for just our school at St. Brendan, for the whole community of St. Brendan, ha Hancock Park, for Larchmont. If there's anything that ever needed to be done, Tom says, call me, and people do, and he gets it done. That doesn't happen in politics anymore. We're blessed to have him as our guy. I can't wait to see what he's going to do next. We're there for you 100%. Tom, we love you. And now representing the Department of Transportation and a man who has been called upon, Councilmember LaBange and many of us others, on multiple and different occasions, who is always there when we need him most, and that is Zaki Mustafa from the Department of Transportation. We were thinking of ideas on how we could immortalize um, a great public figure. Uh, you know, Tom LaBange is a proud alumni of John, of John Marshall High School a man who has shown us all how to continue to love and enjoy Los Angeles. And Tom, today we dropped a motion, uh, and on Monday, June 29th, we will dedicate the intersection of St. George and Tracy in front of John Marshall High School as Tom LeBon Square. Councilman Tom LaBange. Where are you?
you, Zacky. <laughs> it's only 10 o'clock at night. Shouldn't be home. In his nearly 40 years with the city, Councilman Lumpanch has dedicated his career to serving the community and improving the quality of life for all of our families. He's always been a straight talk, common sense leader from his campaign speech and has shown me the true meaning of servant leadership. I've had the honor and the privilege to work with him now for almost 30 years and I've seen how customer service is his first and foremost priority. What I admire most about Tom is that he's always positive and he serves with a humble heart no matter what time of the day it is or what day it is. He's always there for us. Councilman is always quick to realize and recognize us in the city family for the work that we do and of our accomplishments with that loaf of bread that he always carries with him. He encourages all of us to be creative and come up with solutions for no matter what the problem is. And one thing that I've learned from Councilman is that if you put your mind together and if you all work together, no matter what the problem is, it can be solved. And Tom, Together, we are the best. Councilman Lombard, I and our great general manager, Salida Reynolds, from the Department of Transportation, would like to thank you for letting us be part of your journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Zachy, uh, Mitch, I'm just very honored. I, I want to thank Ms. Reynolds, but I really want to thank Eric Taylor and all the guys at the sign shop over That's there right. at Tech. Thank you. Thank you. In closing, uh, just a quick personal note here is that um, Tom was someone who urged me to run for public office. I'd worked with him since 2002, right along with my predecessor, Mayor Garcetti. And when the time came, Tom said, Mitch, you've got three things. You've got a head, you've got a heart, and you've got your hands, and you use all three. But I really think that that speaks to Tom more than any, anyone else or anything else, because he knows that you have to, head, have, to have a head for knowing, uh, with ideas to improve the quality of life in one's district. You have to have a heart because you love people and care for people at every level. And you have to have the hands because you're willing to do the work, the dirty work, the heavy lifting, to make your district uh, an incredible place and an example for the whole city. And to me, that encapsulates, uh, encapsulates uh, all that Tom LaBonge is and what he has uh, done and his record over 39.6 years. And that is... Tom LaBonge, Mr. Los Angeles. So uh, you are and always will be uh, a true angel in the city of angels. And it is on uh, in that spirit that we present to you this certificate that is signed by every elected official um, with more whereases than we could even uh, possibly imagine. No one else will ever have as many whereases because, Tom, you've earned them all. You're an incredible public servant. We're all indebted to you, whether we know it or not. So. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless Tom LaBonge. If we can get the photographers down front to, to move so that our photographers in the back. Okay, guys in the front, let's be fair to the guys in the back. Smile again, Tommy. Mitchell, we cannot see you. Boom, boom. You could have just had his little hair. Right 
All righty. Mr. LeBonge. Mr. LeBonge. I believe there are a few members that would like to say a word where it relates to their experiences with you, beginning with Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Mr. President. Jeez, he's not dead, guys. <laughs> he's just getting started. And Tom, I love how you just hoisted that, that money shot that you're always looking for. I love it. You, um, the first time, colleagues, I met Tom LaBonge was in 2006 in these chambers where uh, we signed the official agreement with the Sister Cities uh, Association and named Ischia as one of our sister cities in Italy. And I was with my um, then three-year-old son. And it was the official signing with Carmela Funicello, Anthony Prozzi, who was at, here at the time with us. We went to the back. Um, we celebrated, took photos. And I'll never forget when you hoisted my three-year-old, plopped him on the podium, and held him and, and gave him the little Italy sign. And uh, that was my introduction uh, to you, Tom. How, how much love, respect, and enthusiasm you have for the people that you serve and the people that you surround yourself with. And uh, I've learned such a great deal in the short time I've been um, sitting in this horseshoe from you. Um, you've always told me the importance of picking one or two great big projects that you want to uh, accomplish and, and, and focus, be laser focus on those issues. And of course for us is Jordan Downs and the LA Waterfront. Um, you also taught me the, uh, the importance of service and uh, constituent services, uh, how they should be in the forefront of what we do in day in and day out. I'll miss a number of, of things here um, when, when you leave us, Tom. Of course, I'm gonna miss the calendars that you gave me at the start of the new year, the pumpkin bread, that uh, you gave us um, um, every so often. The, the football passes that you would uh, just strike here, uh, and it was a solid, solid throw right, right on the chest. Um, also, the, uh, the, the library card inspections uh, that you often call for in, in committee. Um, but the also, what you always told us, there's no place like home. You always refer back to what Dorothy said, and of course, the importance of never forgetting your roots and never forget your home and where you came from. And colleagues, there, there's always been a lot of chatter in the, in the recent months from the Daily News, LA Times, on what Tom's going to do next. So I took it upon myself to create a top 10 list on what's next for Tom. So number 10, travel agent for the Los Angeles Sister Cities International Program. Number nine, field deputy for Councilman Buscaino. <laughs> Number eight, the official greeter at LAX. Here he is. <laughs> Number seven, high school football reporter for ABC7. <laughs> Number six, the line manager at Pink's Hot Dogs. There she is. <laughs> Number five, honorary nun at the Monastery of the Angels in Hollywood, where the pumpkin bread you will find today. Number four, Starline Tour Guide. <laughs> Number three, Reserve Sanitation Truck Driver. He loves our sanitation workers. Number two, Griffith Park Dog Walker. And the number one top ten item that Tom's going to... Superhero costume guy at Chinese Theater on Hollywood. Tom, we love you. Thank you for leading us. You will be sorely missed. And thank you for guiding me and mentoring me. I love you and your family, Bridget. The kids, thank you.
Members, I promise you, had I known Joey B was going to do that, I would have made him go last. <laughs> I, I really would hate to go behind Mr. Buscaino, and guess who it is? Mr. Paul Carretz. <laughs> well, this, you'd think this couldn't be much worse. I've actually had a worse experience, which I have to share with you. Um, I'm kind of a shy, low-key politician as it is, but I was on the West Hollywood City Council 25 years ago. I was shyer. So there was the March on Sacramento for gay and lesbian rights. There were 20,000 people in the, in the audience surrounding the Capitol, and I followed Jesse Jackson. <laughs> and my speech was so little listened to that when I completed it, people didn't even notice. And my, my West Hollywood colleague, John Heilman, spoke after me, and at the end of his speech, he said, and if a queen like me can get elected, anyone can. And I spent the day having people ask me if I had come out at that speech. <laughs> so, could be worse, but, but, but not much. <laughs> now, I, I've known Tom since we were both on the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council in the mid-70s with the wonderful Olivia Mitchell. Let's give her a hand. Although I've been a council member for a long time in a couple places, Tom is really my role model for constituent services. There is no one like Tom, and if something isn't getting done, he will actually get out and do it himself. And probably everyone in CD4 and surrounding areas, including me, have seen Tom out there doing something, like being out there with a shovel and removing some weeds or, or whatever. Um, just an amazing example. And the thing I love best about Tom is when you see him with a random person, a random visitor to City Hall, and they're not someone that will polit politically be of any advantage to him. He'll never see these people again, but he will show them the kind of friendly courtesy that we think is dead, but it's not. It's alive in Tom LaVange. Now, sometimes he'll give speeches and you'll sort of wonder where they're going <laughs> and what new <laughs> reference uh, that you didn't expect will happen, but I think that's just because Tom is sort of the poet of the city council and, and it's just creativity. Um, I know he has one regret in all his years in city government and city council, and that's that in reapportionment he couldn't move over a few feet and get pinks into his district. <laughs> But I still have it, so. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy his references to history of music and film and art and life. Uh, I've enjoyed that on the council and I'll miss it. Um, the one thing I'll also miss is the city council, is, as long as I've watched city politics, which has probably been 50 years, there's always been some great character, a character, some big personalities, and Tom is really the last of that. Uh, and we will miss that, Tom. I'll try my best to replace you, <laughs> but I, I don't think I can be much help in that regard, honestly. <laughs> and I just have one question left that I've always wanted to ask you. Where'd you go to high school? <laughs> Carrettes, probably the absolute best member to follow, Joe Buscaino. You were phenomenal, Paul. Okay, the pressure is now on Mr. Michael Bonin. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Um, and thank you, Tommy, for everything you've done. Uh, I was struck by the fire department talking about how they had special training for how to manage the council member in the case of a fire. <laughs> and I was thinking, geez, Herb probably did the same thing, which is why he appointed you as assistant pro tem, so you were up there. <laughs> as, uh, as I was thinking today, I've had like a sort of a series of snapshots in my head of, of memories of you. 
And uh, I remember your first committee meeting that you were chairing as a council member. It was upstairs on the 10th floor. I was working for Ruth Galaner. And I guess it must have been an education in neighborhoods. Um, Greg Nelson came up to testify at the table. And he referred to you as Councilman LaBonge. And you said, no, 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 call me Tommy. And Greg said, no, I'm calling you Councilman because you've earned it. And there's probably nobody who's earned it as much as you did. I have a very harrowing memory of being with you. Uh, one day when I was working for Bill, uh, you decided to invite us out to lunch one day. And we went to some fried fish place uh, south of here. And um, then you took us for a ride. All of a sudden, you were driving us around downtown, and all of a sudden we made a sharp turn, and we started going down sort of a, a, a steep road, and all of a sudden we were on the LA River. And we were driving over the riverbed, and we were going through all sorts of tunnels and stuff like that, and I thought, we're going to die here. <laughs> I thought that driving with Bill was the scariest experience I'd ever had in my life. You, you actually topped that. Uh, I remember when I got elected, or I guess it was during the campaign, we had breakfast. I guess it was, I think it was at Philippe's. And you brought me over to a big map of the old rail system in Los Angeles. And you just had so much passion talking about it. And you were really encouraging me. When you take this job, think big, dream big, and try to do the big things that make LA such a great city. Uh, and I remember you had a gift for upstaging us. Uh, when I f one of my first things on council was something about uh, parking meter reform, not giving tickets to people uh, when the meters were broken. And it was a big day and there were a lot of cameras here for it. And all of a sudden, you reach down to that bottomless pit of supplies you have underneath your, your, your desk and you pulled out a tire. It was a big tire and you had a piece of chalk and you were illustrating the importance of meter maids uh, or meter readers. Uh, and, of course, that was the photo of the day, was Tom LaBonge with a big tire. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, I also remember how almost every two weeks since I've been here, you ask how Bill Rosendahl is doing. Uh, and every now and then you ask me how Ruth Galanter is doing. You just have a huge history about this building, and you never really forget anybody. Um, you've been a great role model for me. Paul mentioned it. Uh, my first day in office, I thought, what would Tom do? I actually did. And so the first day, I went out and I picked up trash, and I served lunches to seniors and stuff like that. And I remember on, I guess it was my fourth day in office, it was July 4th, they had all sorts of traffic officers around Venice and the marina for the fireworks show. And I was driving home, and I was, I'd been in like two parades, and I was tired, I wanted to get home. And then all of a sudden I stopped, and I turned around, because I thought of what would Tom LeBonge do. I, I, every time I've been with you, and you see a city employee, you stop and say hello. So that's something I've learned from you and I've made it a custom because it's the kind of appreciation you have for city employees. You have such a huge, rich legacy. <laughs> yeah, anyone who hikes in Griffith Park has you to thank. Uh, anyone who visits that zoo has you to thank. Anybody who goes through LAX, especially the Tom Bradley International Terminal, I will never call it Tibbet, uh, uh, has you to thank. And I think people tend to forget anybody who rides the Wilshire subway has you to thank for all the work you did uh, on Metro. Uh, so, you know, in a week and a half or so, there's going to be some new faces here and there's going to be new energy, but we're going to miss a few things. There will be no one here who will uh, tell us how to pose for photos. <laughs> There's going to be no one here who is um, uh, going to um, uh, give us history lessons uh, and tell us about the times of John Ferraro and remind us about sort of the, the arc of history and all those we succeed. Um, there's going to be no one as good at, as, as you have been at appreciating all the city employees who come here. You know everybody by name, especially Avak who you call out uh, several times a week. Avak should have actually been up there for the presentation. Uh, I think after all this time, he deserves a bit of a rebuttal. Um, and also when you're gone, we're gonna miss the incredible, incredible spirit that you've brought to this chamber. You have so shown us how to love Los Angeles and how to love the city. And it's, 
a, 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 a level that I don't think we can, we can hope to match because it's been a joy to behold. Uh, so today I think that uh, Tom Bradley and I think Big John are looking down and smiling with incredible pride at everything you've done. Thanks, Tommy. Mr. Sadia. <laughs> Mr. President, it's a rough day. There's, everybody's on their game, on their <laughs> par. I mean, the mayor, I mean, we know he's a smart guy. We know he's eloquent. But he nailed it. I think everybody should just attach their comments to the mayor <laughs> until you hear Joe with his top ten. I was going to suggest he can come and work for me. It's closer. Oh, it does. Right? Uh, <laughs> And then Ta, uh, Paul, you know, I wish I could be that Louis C.K. funny without trying to be funny, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm not funny, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just not. <laughs> I suck at that. So, uh, so let me talk about my dear friend, Tom LeBond from the heart. We met at Larry Nicola's, a mutual friend of ours, a uh, great guy. And, you know, I got to know Tom. One of the great things about knowing Tom is, is um, when you go to his house, he has this array of friends. And then you think, wow, I'm, if you fit in there, you're like, I'm part of that whole array of friends, right? Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of, you know, mostly guys. All kinds of guys there, right? Like guys you grew up with, guys you forgot in the second grade, guys you, you fought with in the seventh grade, guys you, you know, drank a beer with when you weren't supposed to in the you know, ninth grade or 10th grade, <laughs> a bunch of guys. And, and, and then you get amazed because they're all Tom's friends, right? And so the great thing about him is, is that he keeps his old friends and it speaks very highly of him. I have a quote about leadership uh, from John Maxwell. It says, leadership is not about title, positions, or flow charts. It's about the one life influencing another. And by that definition, Tom, you are one of LA's greatest leaders. And there is no question about it. You are the consummate public servant. Uh, you are helping me tremendously do this job because this job of public service at the local level is, is a difficult job. Uh, it's very challenging. Uh, it makes high demands of you personally. And for some of us, uh, Caretz and myself, modest at the core, uh, the public service part of interfacing with the public is, is, uh, is difficult. And so for us, for me, I just emulate you, you know? Just throw my hands out, right? <laughs> throw a pass, right? <laughs> Do that little deal, right? <laughs> and so those are the things that you're teaching us to, to embrace and love uh, the public. Um, I love you because you are a, a, a great man to your family, uh, you and your wife, met the same challenges uh, my wife and I met. And you did so with uh, just uh, incredible, incredible courage. And, uh, and you walked right through it, right? You just, you were like the pulling center and you were gonna take, turn that corner and take out that linebacker. And you did that. And so, uh, and you're that same way with your friends. And you're that same way with your friends. And that's why you're the great leader that you are. And, uh, you know, just love you so much. Uh, you know, you're welcome. Fourth, you know, the first district is right near the fourth, you know. It's not a far drive, you know. It used to be the fourth, <laughs> exactly. It used to be the fourth, right? And so, uh, uh, you know, uh, anytime you want to, you know, play catch, you can give me a call. This, uh, this old arm, you know, I, I can get a good, seven yards, 10 yards in there, you know? <laughs> Let me say the last quote, Mr. President, and you all sit down. Uh, yeah, the one thing that's amazing is, is being the ambassador of Los Angeles, and that, I think that should be your next title. Ambassador of Los Angeles, maybe we put a motion in to create that. Is those endless acts of leadership that you engage in every day. Every single day when you stop to help somebody, when you're cleaning out a gutter, when you stick your head in a restaurant to see if everybody's okay, 
you know, and I'm sitting in there in the fourth district going, right? <laughs> Tom was here, right? I walk in there, oh, Tom was here, oh, okay, right? <laughs> right, exactly, where's the fuck? <laughs> but uh, the final quote of Maxwell, real leadership is being the person others will gladly and confidently follow you. And I will follow you anywhere, my brother. God bless you. Love you. Mr. Fuentes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let me begin by saying that I'm in absolute denial. Um, I am. I, uh, Tom, you asked me to go look at the exhibit. I didn't because I'm not prepared to uh, see you off. And I don't think Los Angeles is either. Um, Mr. Price, do you know what the mascot is for John Marshall High School? <laughs> Johnny Barrister. You know what their colors are? Sunlit and moon, midnight blue, right? We've been talking, some of us, secretly in terms of who it is that's going to begin or how many of us are going to begin to emulate Mr. LaVange. Because there are many, many jobs here that Mr. LaVange does. You heard, I think, very artfully by the mayor and everybody that followed the mayor uh, the tremendous role that you've played for the city of Los Angeles. And I don't think that there's any one of us that can do it by themselves. I think what's impressive about you, Mr. LaVange, is that you really embody everything that a steward should. And you do it with so much flair and so much love and so much grace. And you do it with a beautiful family, which is incredible to do. And so let's give them a big round of applause. They. Thank you, Tom LaBonge family, Bridget and the kids, for sharing him with us. Um, I have to imagine that my denial will sort of end soon in the coming weeks after the recess when we have a new council and new people here, and it will sit very heavy then to me that you won't be here, and I'm afraid that we're going to have to find Mr. Hobbies for Mr. La Mr. Los Angeles here, Bridget, because he's going to be home. So find yourself some hobbies. <laughs> Don't drive the family crazy. Uh, that's what all of us folks who retire do, unfortunately. Um, you know, it's often said that in Los Angeles there are 16 mayors and that there isn't really one mayor and a council. All of us have these responsibilities and we have to oversee so much. I would argue that uh, there really are only two. It's whoever was elected mayor and Tom LaBonge. It, 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 it doesn't matter which mayor is in office. I think uh, Mr. Buscaino, Mr. Bonin, all of us have experienced that you don't stay in your district. You've been <laughs> at my district, you've come to my events, and, and I think we're better for it. So um, in the spirit of trying to figure out who's going to take on some of your characteristics, Avak, where are you? Avak? Avak, where are you, Avak? Avak, I need a motion. I need a motion changing the charter of Los Angeles to have two mayors, okay? So let's go ahead and work on that. And I also have to imagine that we are probably going to evade Mr. City Attorney. Dion, Dion, Mr. City Attorney, we're going to evade an awful lot of Brown Act violations now that Mr. LaBonge isn't speaking on items because, Tom, you never st stayed on course. You always talked about everything other than the agendized <laughs> item. It's all important, but you never, it's agendized, it's Brown Act. We're going to save a lot of money, Mr. City Attorney. <laughs> um, you know, you, you've been an ambassador to, I think, the greatest city on the planet. You, you really have been. I mean, you've been everywhere. And in the spirit of trying to follow your lead, colleagues, I've already been to Japan and Australia in less than a year on business, promoting the city of Los Angeles, trying to learn how to do better. So, uh, Jose, I'm, I'm going after that sister city thing. Sorry. Um, I just gave him up because we really have been talking about what it is that we're all going to do to pull our weight around here. Um, you know, the, the love that you have for Los Angeles is incredible. And I, and I think that if we were able to package that and give that to every Angelino, then we really would have a revolution of the heart here in the city. The, the, the things that are facing us are, are very difficult. And you have constantly shared with all of us that we're the future of Los Angeles and you're the past. Well, we wouldn't be prone and ready to do the best possible job but for your leadership and your influence on all of us. So um, I'm very excited to, uh, to be here with you. 
and I'm not going to say goodbye, and, and, and I'm not going to go look at that exhibit. If I've got a question, I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to pick up the phone, and I'm going to ask you what it is that I should do. If I've got any sort of concern about what it is that we're doing, I'm not going to wait around for an answer. I'm going to walk around and find out for myself like you did. You do. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not a goodbye. It's a till I see you later. And, uh, you know, one of the favorite things that you say to me, uh, lots of them, uh, I'm going to say to you, you might be number four in the lineup, but you're number one in my heart, Tom. Thank you. Mr. Wizar. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Tom, you love the city of Los Angeles, and she loves you back. We love you, Tom. Um, this is uh, uh, something that Philippe and I have actually been talking about for over a year now. We were thinking how much we're going to miss you. Uh, who, you know, we're, it's not going to be the same around here anymore. Uh, you bring an energy to this room that is much needed. You bring a love to this room that is much needed, and we love you for that. Uh, I was called several times by constituents, and, thank, and they thanked me for improving our city services. Somebody said, some guy came up today and cleaned my front sidewalk. <laughs> and this guy, one of these guys were from the Arts District, where we haven't delivered those types of city services in a very long time. It's an industrial area. And they were thanking me for you being out there sweeping up, doing things. And so uh, yeah, this is something, as the mayor said, you didn't do it in front of the cameras. You were just doing it out there because you love this city. And uh, I uh, just am going to miss you tremendously. I'm going to miss your advice, too. Taking pictures, you tell me, stick in your stomach, stick out your neck. After a while, I thought I was looking like a turtle in the pictures, but um, we all appreciate that. You not only uh, gave us advice um, because you cared about us, but you were looking at the bigger, grander picture about what is possible. So we are going to miss you. I'm going to miss you telling me what streets in, should be renamed in my district. Uh, where should we put up squares in, uh, in my district to name them after somebody? Uh, what should we do at Placita Alvera? and to bring in more of the history there. Uh, lots of things. And um, one day when I was on the board of Metro and I couldn't make it uh, at that time, Mayor Virgos asked you to substitute there. The next day in the LA Times said, red line, rail, light rail being extended to the Arts District. And I said, Tom did more in one day that I was there than I had done the whole year. But uh, you, you have a lot of enthusiasm. The last thing I would say, I couldn't think of what type of gift I could give you as your parting way. And I know you've given out bread many times um, to people from the monastery. So as I got up this morning, I went around my neighborhood and I was looking for something similar. There's a lot of panaderias in my neighborhood, right? So the only thing I could find to give you as your parting way, Tom, was some Mexican pan dulce. And but I love you, Tom. Mr. Bob Blumenfield. Uh, thank you. Tom, I've probably uh, known you less time than everybody here, but I, and just, just really our two years that we've gotten to overlap together, but I am so grateful for those two years together. Uh, I've just, you know, I want to attach and echo what I've heard from all my colleagues in that you have been a role model uh, in so many ways and, and someone to emulate. I've modeled my constituent service after much of what you've done. We've stolen your ideas, although I've told you that we're stealing them when we're doing it. And you said, you gave me that thumbs up, boy, do it, when we wanted to, to, to get the truck like you had the truck. In fact, I wanted, I, I was asked my staff to get a football so I could throw it at you right now. But then I said, you know what, I better not, because what's gonna happen is Tom does it, he gets, he surprises him, throws a football at the person at the podium, hit some dead on, I know that I would throw it at you. I would hit one of these nice ladies in the front <laughs> row. And, uh, and you know, that would be a bad thing. So, you know, I just wanted to echo, and you often, you often quote, um, I think it's the Isaac Newton quote about, if I see further, it's only because I stand on the shoulders of greatness. And you, 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 you often say that when you're talking about an accomplishment and how you cite Ferraro and Bradley as, as the shoulders that you stand on to see further and to make things happen. Well, if all of us here are going to do great things in the future, it's only because we have your broad shoulders to stand on. 
and, and I'm extremely grateful, and I thank you for, for your service and for being a friend and a mentor. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Curran Price. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, like Bob, I've only uh, known you for uh, two years, Tom, but it seems like 102 years. Uh, and I see I'm not alone. You just affect everybody that way. You've got that power, that magnetism, that uh, authenticity, uh, that honesty. It just really rings through. And so we're going we're gonna to miss you. We're going to miss all of your, uh, your ideas, your suggestions. I remember, uh, you know, the lunch we had uh, shortly after I came in. And we, did, we did a tour around the, around the Ninth District. And you were telling me about places on Central Avenue and on Broadway and on Avalon uh, and how I should rename this, the district office. So, Tom, I want you to know I've taken all those things into consideration. I appreciate your, your love, appreciate your commitment to the city. We know that you love the city, the city loves you. Uh, keep up the good work. Paul Krikorian. Thank you, Mr. President. Tom, this is a really festive occasion, but I got to tell you, I hate it. I hate it because I'm really uh, personally going to miss you, and I'm going to miss you um, as a member of this council. I'm going to miss you as a citizen of Los Angeles. Um, I started learning from you 22 years ago when I was a grassroots activist in Silver Lake, and I made the mistake of uh, not endorsing you uh, when you ran for city council, and you've schooled me then, and you've been schooling me ever since. <laughs> You've been schooling me when I was a member of the Assembly and re we represented common constituents. Uh, you schooled me when I got here and you actually kind of took me under your wing and served as, as a mentor uh, of mine. And I've um, learned from you as your seatmate uh, right up until this very day. And um, I'm going to miss you and I'm going to miss that influence that you've had on me a lot. Um, you know, you've, you've taught me how to get things done. I've for a few years now, chaired budget and finance through some really difficult times uh, in this city's history. And, you know, we've dealt with things like metrics and numbers and data and things like that. And you taught me that all you really have to do is say, I know you're having problems with your budget, but we got to do it for the people. We got to do it for the people. And somehow it happens. <clears throat> I'm kind of some of my colleagues would say a little bit of a stickler about rules and things around here. I've got my rule book here that I keep no. in my desk, you no. know. And, and I learned from you that really you don't need this. All you need to do is say, Havok, I need a motion. <laughs> but, you know, I've, I've learned about uh, public service from you. I, I've learned that whether you have 39.6 years here, or whether you have 12 years, or whether you have four years, time is short. And you have to do this work with a sense of urgency. And uh, if you do with passion, you get a lot done. And you have left such an enormous legacy to this city because of that sense of urgency you have and so much accomplishment that's been talked about. And um, I think all of us uh, see that as an as a example of what we can do or hope to be able to do with our careers. Um, you've taught us all about the importance of remembering, remembering our past, but also remember what, remembering what we're doing today. And people always joke about your, you know, stage managing the photographs and everything. And, you know, come on for the two shot. Come on, we got to get the two shot. Boom, boom. We, we've all done that um, with you. And we've all sort of poked fun at you about it. But the truth is, by you doing that, you're documenting the history of today as well for future generations. And it, it's really so important. And, and most important, I think you've done this job with joy that the rest of us could only hope to emulate. And, and that's important uh, for the quality of life that we have as we do this job, but more, much more important than that, it's important for everybody here who sees you with that joy, and it's so infectious that it makes people believe in government. It makes people believe in what the city can accomplish. You've treated every single person you've ever come across with uh, complete respect, whether they're heads of state or whether they're a sanitation worker uh, cleaning out a storm drain. 
Um, and you knew both of them by name, and you used first names for both of them as well. Um, you've shown us that you can do this job and have fun with it. And most importantly, I think you've shown us all that commitment to family is the most important thing of all. Uh, when, how, and how many people have come up here, um, you know, that you've reminded them to call their mother? Uh, or, you know, you've reminded them of, of people that have gone before them and how precious their memory is, and you've been a, a source of comfort, and you've been very committed to your own family uh, as well. And, and that's been difficult, I know, because you have a district that is pretty demanding, and it demands a lot of your time. And, and um, you know, I, I think your family has sacrificed, and Bridget and Charles, uh, Mary Kay, I know that you've given up a lot of your time that you could have spent with your dad that he was spending with his constituents. Um, so you've sacrificed a lot for this city as well. But I want you to know that you and your children and your grandchildren and generations after that are going to be able to drive around this city and point to things and say, Tom LaBange did that. Tom LaBange did that. Tom LaBange did that. And that's an incredible legacy that I think all of us could only hope to achieve. I grew up watching Ralph Story's Los Angeles. Tom remembers that. Probably not too many other people in this room do. Um, but Ralph Story's Los Angeles um, told the story of the city in a personal way and linked us with our past. Then, a little bit after that, Hewell Hauser came along and, and did something similar um, with that personal touch. I don't know what you're going to do next in life, Tom. I don't know what your next position is. But if there's any TV exe executives out there listening, I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to watching Tom LaBonge's City of the Angels on, on PBS or some other. <clears throat> Tom, I never thought I'd do this in a million years, but I gotta say, you've had four great quarters. It's the two-minute warning. You're racing for the goal line. Tom, go deep. Martinez. That was good. Good throw, Tom. Good throw. Um, well, I, I also didn't think this day was going to come. Having served with Tom for now almost 20 months, there is nothing like sitting next to Tom LaBonge, by the way. I think John has put it uh, in a really good way, but there really isn't anything like sitting next to Tom LaBonge. The, your desk is amazing. I mean, there's stuff everywhere. I am a neat freak, so it freaks me out to have your stuff spilled over to my desk. So for the last 20 months, I've been containing Tom at every single council me meeting. But what is amazing about Tom is his impeccable memory. His detailed memory, every time he autographs a picture, there is the name, the place, the time, and the date of where the picture was taken. And these incredible folders that his staff <laughs> runs around getting I mean, it, the amount of detail that goes into Tom and every picture that he, that he takes and the memory that came from that picture is amazing. But what I'm going to miss the most, Tom, is the fact that you hold my hand every time you have to take a difficult vote, with all due respect to Bridget. <laughs> and the fact that sometimes, you know, I, I help, you know, guide every time it gets a little crazy. But there is no person, you're an extraordinary man. You are a wonderful humanitarian. You have been such a good friend to me. Your advice and a mentor. I will never forget those two things. What you told me when I got here. I earned my keep and I needed to work hard for my constituents and I've been doing that ever since. I love you to the moon and back, Tom. I'm gonna miss you, but your family has now the time to enjoy you. There will never be another Tom LaBonge in the city of Los Angeles. Congratulations for your years of service. I love you. Ms. Martinez, I'd now like to call on Mr. Herb Wesson. 
And you now, know, Mr. Herb Wesson. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to uh, just say a couple of things. A couple of things that I'm not going to miss. <laughs> and that's when you come up and hug on me and twirl me around. I'm a flashy urbanite. And now I don't have to worry about my clothing being destroyed by Tom LeBlanc. I also will not have to come here on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday and debate who has the worst tie, you or Mr. Koretz. <laughs> Mr. Koretz, you will be the champion, finally. But on a serious note, I think you felt genuine love from the members that you served with. And there may have been times when we weren't always on the same side. But what happened today was 13 other people saying to you in a variety of ways that they love you and that they're going to miss you. You cannot replace a Tom LaBange. That is an impossibility. And members, I love this job you've given me, and I hope to get it again in a few days. <laughs> honestly say that there are times when this is very challenging and just unbelievably difficult. And as I'm trying to keep my head to always know that Tom would come up, what do you need? I'm with you. How can I help you? Take a deep breath. It's going to be all right. You don't know how important that was to me personally. When I look around this horseshoe, nobody around this horseshoe has known each other as long as you and I. When we came in, you had a full head of hair. I had a 28 waistline. We, you still have a great hair. My waist now is blah, blah. But Mr. LeBange has been there time and a time and, and time again. I don't know what I'm going to do. This is literally losing a friend. There won't be a day that I won't come up and sit in that chair and look at this desk and look for you. There won't be a day that I will expect my phone to ring at 8 in the morning or 6 and have you on it telling me, I'm going to be seven minutes late, Mr. President. <laughs> you know, now I'll be a little late. I'm going to be seven minutes and 23 seconds late. <laughs> but on behalf of this council, and all of the employees that work in this building and outside. We all want to say to you, well done. Not bad at all. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for the great Tom LeBond.
Show me the football. Oh, you got it right now. Here we go, Chuck. Ready? <laughs> You're very good, Nuri. Uh, members, thank you very, very much for this here. And, and my wife, Bridget, thank you for putting up with me for all these years because it is very difficult. We met on June 16, 1979, at 6907 Lancashire Boulevard. I, uh, it was a Saturday. I had a date with a girl who used to work at City Hall, and she called me at 2.45 in the afternoon, and I was sweeping the front, <laughs> front steps of my house down the street, and uh, she said she broke the date. And then at 3.30, my cousin Carolyn called me and said they have a friend just out of the blue would, would you have an extra ticket for Hoyt accident at the Palomino? And that's how I met my wife and been with her ever since. So special. And I, I truly want to thank my children, Mary, Catherine, and Charles. Uh, as young infant children, I was then working for the mayor, and they went to every spot of the Los Angeles. <laughs> mayor Reardon, the job I had from him is to cover many places in the city and represent. And I remember I'd run in to... Uh, Sometimes fire retirements and, and the fire chief's wives would hold you babies, you know, as I'd make the speech that needed to be made about the firefighter retiring, uh, which is so special. Mary Kate, I love you and I love you, Charles, and I, I want you to know that it's been tough because we always haven't been there, but they did school me one time, Joe. They said, listen, I don't want to go to the park again if there's a microphone there, you know, so <laughs> I'd say teach them all there. But, I want to thank my grandfather, uh, Alexander Labonge, who lived at 310 North Los Angeles Street. The only reason I knew that was I went to Berlin once in the uh, uh, early 80s, and I met distant relatives, and anything could read. It was over 100 years ago that the only thing that was English was the address, 310 North Main Street. He came from Germany. Uh, the other side of the family, Al Irish, Thomas Joseph Lernahan, who I'm named after. He was a Los Angeles police officer on Sitchell Street, where my mother was born 100 years ago. They had 11 children in the first district there. When he made sergeant, Mr. Wesson, he moved to Teth and Lucerne. That's what sergeant's pay go, could have done back then in the 30s. But my parents were extremely special to me. And uh, as the mayor said, you know, uh, and the mayor Garcetti is such a wonderful individual, knowing him, working close to him uh, over the time, my parents gave me everything that that I got. My parents and my brothers gave me everything that I got. My mother on October 6, 1953 called Mrs. O'Brien and Mrs. O'Brien lived over on Tesla Avenue and said come over and uh, watch my brother Bobby, my brother Tim, my brother Chris and brother Dennis. Then she drove my brother Brian and Steve into school that morning and went down Sunset Boulevard to uh, up Coronado up to Queen of Angels Hospital. I was born at at 845. And, and the doctor asked, hey, uh, you want me to invite Bob upstairs? Because back then, dads couldn't come into the room. And my mother forgot to tell my father she was having another son that day. <laughs> but our parents, and I don't know, Mike, you said something there. My parents, my brother Bobby, give my brother Bobby a big hand right there. Stand up, Bobby. <laughs> my brother Bobby told me to vote for the uh, livable wage. My brother Dennis, who lives in Orange County told me not to. I voted with my brother Bobby. All right, okay. So, and my brother Mark, who's my youngest brother, who I'm so proud of, and, and all of my brothers. But on, on, on Sunday night, we would have everybody around the table, and my father would want us all to tell a quick story. And when you say I, like, you know, uh, upstage or whatever it is, <laughs> Nuri is the sister that I don't have in this council, and you're the brothers you know, in this period of this time. Because if I could upstage you, I'm upstage with my brother Bobby. I'm upstage with my brother Tim or Brian or Stephen or Dennis or Chris or Mark, any one of them. Because that's kind of what I learned. Because I was seven of eight. And in my life, I, as a big family, got to take the trash out every Thursday. It was a special day. And the trash men were the nicest guys in town. And they let me push the button because we loaded from the back, Sharon, so there was no automation. And they were very nice on that. And then, and then they came in the neighborhood every summer to burn the lots because it was before we had air control. They burned the, the weeds off the lots, and there was a lot of lots back at Silver Lake there. And believe it or not, they trimmed trees on a three-year cycle because we knew Mr. Henry's name 
who was the superintendent of the trees, and he came every three years, and my mother I always brought ice water down to the, the crews that are there. My family taught me so much. My mom and dad were born in Los Angeles, and that really taught me so much. And we didn't go on planes anywhere, but we went to Griffith Park or Elysian Park, or we'd go to San Pedro and watch the longshoremen with cargo, no containers back then, Joe. And we'd take the ferry across the Terminal Island, and we'd explore the city, which was so important, the city that I love. But having the opportunity uh, to work here was very special. And Olivia Mitchell has been one of the greatest mentors, not just for me, but all young people working for Mayor Bradley. I know Paul Caretz, Ed Reyes, Wendy Gruel, uh, myself, a bunch of judges, all were in the Youth Council, and that was a great opportunity. And in 1975, I was up at the observatory, and there was Mr. Bradley. And Mr. Bradley was just leaving after a program. And as he left after a program, a woman's car was broken down. And Mayor Bradley got out of his car, went in his car, and took jumper cables out and jumped the woman's car. I carry a jumper cables in my car because of Tom Bradley, because that's service to all people and they need. All service and all need. But so many times. And I told that story the other day. And coming home, someone was broken down. They went to Roosevelt, McGill. They were broken down. They were, they were right off of Griff Park Boulevard. I jumped them. And I told that story that day. But from Mayor Bradley and the great opportunity to Peggy Stephen, who did groundwork that Mitch is now carrying off in a great way, revitalizing Hollywood in so many ways, to the Olympic movement that took place there. That was such a moment for Los Angeles, because Montreal had overruns, and everybody would say no to the Olympics. But Mayor Bradley stood tall, John Farrell stood tall, and it was an 8-7 to seven vote. And Marvin Browdy cast the 8 vote. And that was such a big, tough deal, but it was so great to welcome the world to Los Angeles and having them to work for 16 years with John Ferraro. And in pre-9-11 times, going to the Olympic Games, I drove John to 24 different events. And we parked right here, and right where Herb is right there is the entry, and saw the world. And that really just got into my mind how we have to do that again, and I hope one day that we will do that. But having that opportunity to work with John Ferraro, who never made people crawl to him, never never did things for the city. And the great thing, too, about the city is the, the title of your card says, if you pull it out of your pocket, is Los Angeles City Council member. Not anything but that. So we're all responsible for the whole city and the good. And John had a motto, if it's good for the city, it's good for the district. But working for John and then working for Dick Reardon was very good because Mr. Reardon was absolutely uh, positive after the uh, tragic earthquake and we saw what happened in trying to bring the city back together and then going to the Department of Water and Power, which I'm proud of the Department of Water and Power. They do have to correct some things, but they should stand tall because this power is coming from somewhere and there's somebody in 95 degree heat pulling a line up off a transmission line. Because you know how many, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Weezar, I don't have to ask you, and, uh, but I would tell you, it's three things that run a power company. Generation, transmission, and distribution, and DWP does that well. But the, all the challenges they have, I want them to get over those hurdles because we have to believe in our city. And the water is so precious. This morning we broke ground for a water line, reclaim water. Uh, and Stephen Coleman from Channel 7 explained how reclaim water works. And he's a great cameraman. And I had to explain to him, well, you got up this morning, Stephen, and you left your bedroom and you went to another room in your house and you used a facility and you moved it down. And then it went down to the reclaim plant and they treated it. And now it's in a line into Griffith Park to make all the grass green. So he understood that, which was very good. But that opportunity, uh, and then to get a, 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 to leave Water Power to come here and get elected, uh, it was very big honor. It was a big, big, big honor to serve with people. And why I asked what high school you go to, and I know some of you from out of the Ohio and back east and other places, Morningside, right? Okay. So. The, 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 uh, it tells us where we are started from. And this is like a team. This is like a team that you're on. And I was on a team, you know, and the team was Los Angeles. And we were winning every day fighting for it. So that was the real key thing in all these years and the great things to try to do. And as Joe said, you picked one or two things you got to go for. And Mike on that subway, it was really saying, and I like Mayor Viragosa and what he did after me. And Mike Fear, what he did as assemblyman after me because you get down the field and somebody else takes over and, and does that in such a way there 
because I walked over to Mr. Hahn was on the MTA board, and Mr. Hahn, I said, Mayor, do you want to start the subway up again? And he said, you could do it, Tom. So I took it like I got the ball. And, and, I, and I wasn't successful in the first moment, but then I went to Santa Monica City Hall, Culver City, Beverly Hills, and West Hollywood. He got them behind, and then Mr. Yaroslavsky, who's been a great champion for all this region in so many ways, culturally and fiscally and also on transit, got the subway going again. And Mr. Viragosa, I know he says subway to the sea, but also I want the subway to USC so it gets out to Exposition Park as we build all this whole system out in the future. So all that is so special to have the opportunity working here. And I'm looking to the deputies and the aides that are here. I stood where you stand right now, and I didn't know I would be here. I remember one time I asked John Farrell, hey, John, we're going to be late. We've got to give a guy at Carol A, Johnny Hayes, a, a resolution. And John still had more business. He reminded me whose name was on the door. God bless you, John. You know, <laughs> you know that. But all that, all that is your opportunity to help people, which is so important because there's only one day, and that's the day to day. So this is, I just really thank this tribute. And Daryl was my first employee, which is so special, and, uh, and the work. And, the, and he did get every couch up there. We get those couches off the ground. And all those folks who came down here, I want to thank Kathy Jones Irish, my first chief of staff. Stand up, Kathy. Jane Galbraith, too. All that very good there. Uh, so. And people from the community. Yeah. And my son, Charles, who uh, is very special, wants to say something. So I want to uh, give him the microphone before I finish. Charles. How far away Thank you. Um, most of you know my father, Tom, as a colleague or a, maybe even a stranger, a friend, for a couple of you, a brother. Um, but on behalf of my sister and myself, uh, I think that it was a blessing that we are the children of someone like him. Um, and I can attest to the point that Eric Garcetti made that Tom is the same person sitting on the couch watching Sports Center at night as he is getting pumpkin bread from the Angels Monastery and wherever else he is in Los Angeles. Um, though there are sacrifices that both my sister, my mom, and I had to make, um, there are plenty of doors opened from this uh, opportunity, and I think it's something that's not replaceable, and it's anything or nothing like it. So I just want to say thank you for everyone helping form this man that stands behind me today and the man that I will stand by for the rest of my life. Um, I'm Mary Kate. Uh, their daughter. I wanted to share, so many know the Tomisms of let's continue to enjoy and love the city of Los Angeles and safety first, um, which to my brother and I were annoying when we didn't want to wear bike helmets or, uh, you know, we wanted to get going and we wanted to jaywalk and he made us go to the crosswalk. Uh, but the, the dadism that's most important to me that I want to share with everyone, I remember the day in third grade that he told me this on the way to school. Once a job has begun, never leave it till it's done. Be the labor, big or small, do it right or not at all. And that is so special to me because uh, I carry that with me through both school and work and, and in everything. And I hope dearly that we can still carry that as his children. Um, I appreciate everything. I, my brother and I really grew up here and I, there are some people I've never gotten the chance to speak to, but you all are a part of um, our childhood, so thank you so much for everything, and uh, uh, I really appreciate how you've humored him through the years, because he loves his job, and uh, he couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to Mitchell Farrell for organizing this because it's been very cathartic. Um, the feelings that I've been here like six weeks at City Hall and in the satellite offices, 
cleaning out 40 years of collection of um, memories and photographs and things I thought we gave away he brought to City Hall. So um, <laughs> I thought to myself uh, about two months ago, how can I be of service to Tom at this time? Um, and I thought the best thing I can do is to come down and shepherd him out this door because I I brought him here, I'm sorry, so many times. And I, I, literally when I walk in here, this is kind of where we live a lot. Our kids know this building. They know how to get to the top without instruction. <laughs> um, we, our family has lived this life. When Tom got elected, Mary Kate was seven and Charles was three. This is how we have lived. And when I met Tom, this is how he lived. And I want to tell you all that I met him 37 years ago, and he's exactly the same person I met as you see today. And I want to tell everyone here, I appreciate your presence, and I, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the gratitude and the words, because I thought it was going to be easy for me to shepherd him out. It's hard for me to get out as well. Thank you, everybody, so much for loving him and humoring him. I know he's, he's a lot of work. <laughs> and Gil, when I got sick, I got diagnosed with breast cancer in 2006. I called my councilman, and he came, and he, he helped me out. Tom ran the front lines for me for a year of, of uh, surgery and recovery. And, and I can't tell you, uh, in the midst of such craziness in this job, he was there for me every day. He's been there for our family. And I want to tell you that, that uh, every one of you has contributed greatly to our life. And our children know you all like family. And I, I very, very, very much appreciate it, and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you uh, very much, everybody. I also want to just say thank my staff, my past and former staff, and uh, just come out for a shot real quick. My staff, come up here, Kathy, Jane, come up here. Stacy, Stacy, Olga, and I want to give a big hand. Yeah, Stacy, get in here. Get in here. Right, where's Camilla? Camilla Blanche, for the work that you've done on our sister city program, give a big hand. I want to give a big, big, big hand for my former chief of staff, Carolyn Ramsey, right here. Mrs. LeBonge in here, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, well, I know. Yeah. Good, we're good yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. Good in here. Yeah. Good job. Come on, come on. Hillary, there's a certificate below your foot. <laughs> Ciao, good job, Ciao. All right, look to the right, look to the right, look to the right, guys. Oh, Thank up. you. Good job, Gigi. Tom, look up. Photoshop. Oh, up there, up there. Oh, good job. <laughs> oh, good job. Yeah. 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 Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball style. Baseball style. Baseball style. Baseball style. Baseball style. Baseball style. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. There you go. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> you get it right in here. Thank you very, very much. Thank all the city employees for the sound of my voice. Thank Hank Hilty from the Farmer's Market. Everybody here, thank the sound man. Yeah, we're going in the back. Mr. LaBonge, we're going to take a picture with the members and send oh, the great. horseshoe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Members, we're taking a picture with Mr. LaBonge inside the horseshoe. <laughs> 